Yo, what's up? Welcome to Wholesale Horror Stories, episode two, where we sit around the campfire and tell horror stories about wholesale deals gone wrong. You know, Jacob, I was thinking we really should make the background like a fireplace. Like a campfire? We should make it like a spooky like fireplace campfire. Yeah, I agree. That'd be pretty dope. So, guys, I want to start it off by encouraging you to come backstage and come tell your horror stories. I'm going to put a link to come backstage in the comments. If you click on it, come backstage. Just make sure you're wearing a shirt if you have your camera on. Um, yeah, there you go. And, Jacob, you have a horror story, don't you? You got you got one coming up? Yeah. So, um, let me just – I'm trying to find the emails from when this happened. This was back in, like, 2022. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see. We'll, we'll give it a moment. We'll, like, hype it up. That way people can come in. How's business been for you, bro? What have you been up to? Just trying to scale and get some more deals. Yeah. Are you going to the squad up summit? Oh yeah. Hell uh, yeah, dude. Are you gonna are you gonna like focus on generating a bunch of JV leads or what's your goals? Um, so I think I'm gonna get my rep. I'm gonna pay for him to come down as well. So he's uh -huh. gonna be focused on acquisitions and then I'll probably just focus on networking and Dude, you can pay you can pay pay for him to come down and tell him the whole time he has to hold a bandit sign above his head asking for deals. <laughs> no, nah, I mean he's he's pretty like he's pretty sociable and he's local too. So we'll probably just jump on like the same flight or something and go down there and try to get these deals. Nice. You know Dude, the name I, of the game. Bro, I went in I went in Vistaprint and like I, I have to check out still. I've been procrastinating on it. Um but I, I have this entire cart full of like business cards with my memes on them, bandit signs with my memes on them, like 300 stickers with my memes on them, notebooks with my memes on them. And it's the uh, why you know send deals meme, like the cringy guy, like why you know send deals, <laughs> uh, deals with Nate at the bottom. And I'm just, I'm just going to go like sticker bomb everybody. Like I'm going to walk up to everybody, like say hi, like lightly touch their back in a way that doesn't seem suspicious and slap a sticker on their back and, <laughs> and just fucking have your sticker everywhere. Yeah. And I was thinking, I was thinking I'd like make some deals with some people where like, if they hold the bandit signs above their head for like a certain amount of hours, I would like give them a reward or something. Good. Yeah. See who can hold it up the longest. I know. Right. Yeah, my dude. I'm excited. Yeah, I gotta start thinking of some creative ways to uh to um get some more deals and network with more people down there. Mm hmm But so what's up, guys? What's up? Come on backstage. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. We got Reggie here with us. Who else? Who else do we have here with us? Give me a give me a hi in the side chat. Jacob, I am curious, bro. What what kind of what kind of crazy horror story do you have coming up? Can you give us a little sneak peek? Yeah, this is just one that um, this real estate agent tried to hold my EMD hostage. Oh no! Yeah. Oh no! Damn, bro. We we tried to claim EMD about a month ago because this. Okay, get this, bro. We had this buyer that um, he didn't he didn't close on time. Mm -hmm. And we were originally only going to make four hundred and ninety dollars or something like that, um, but he put down three thousand EMD, and then we went to claim his EMD because he didn't close on time, and he got all saucy and like he, he's not letting us claim it. He's like, whatever the word is, um, there's a special word for it that starts with a D, um, and the title company like they're they're scared they they don't want to release it. Yeah, that's why even though a lot of times you can have it worded where it says you can get the release, it doesn't always work that way, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yep. All right. Well, four minutes and 40 seconds in. Sometimes it's like, what do we talk about? You want to you wanna hop into the stories? You got something cool to talk about while we wait for more people to come in? Yeah, I can just go and I can jump into this horror story. Hell yeah, let's do it. I want to hear it, bro. All right, bet. So... I had is this was like back in like 2022 
but I had this deal um, in DC and basically the, basically the, um, like the background of it was I was going to put up $2,500 for uh, upfront for the EMD. And then after the inspection period, we were going to put up another 5,000 to make it a total of 7,500. Um, because like they wanted 7,500 for whatever odd reason. And that was the, really the only way that we could get them to come on board. So we signed the contract, we send in our EMD, um, and then we basically, you know, go through our inspection period. I think we had like a three day EMD due date and then a 10 day inspection. So actually I think we had a 15 day inspection. I think we had a pretty long inspection on this one. Um, but we got it locked up on the 15th and we had messaged her. So we went through the property, decided that it didn't work for us. And so I messaged her and I emailed her and I basically was like, Hey, good evening. You know, I trust all as well. Um, unfortunately we decided not to move forward on this one. Um, please see the agreement below and the cancellation. Um, and then, you know, I asked the title company, Hey, could you release my EMD? <clears throat> so the agent responds. She said, good morning. After speaking with my client, the seller, he is not releasing the contractor or the EMD at this time. He noted that he gave the buyer the opportunity to conduct any inspection, formal or informal walkthrough, et cetera, prior to going under contract and the buyer declined. The contract was an inspection period. I know, dude. What? Yeah. And then she said the contract was a cash offer contingent only on a home inspection. And without an actual home inspection, the buyer has no grounds to walk away and is in default of the contract by trying to do so. And then in the contract, it says that the buyer, a contractor, an inspector, or any party the buyer elects to walk the property can walk it for the inspection. So it does not have to be in Virginia. It does have to be an inspector. Um, so then she said, at this time, my buyer's asking per the contract that they need to submit the $5,000 and hand over the $7,500 EMD to the seller. What? She said, she said the Bro, 15 so, thing. Hold, hold on. You're, you, you, okay. So you're 25 into you're 2,500 into the deal. You still have your inspection period. You tell them, hey, it's not going to work. Um, I'd like to cancel. They're like, not only are we not going to let you cancel, but we're going to take your 2,500 and pressure you to giving us another 5,000 on top of that and then, yeah. and then remove your rights to buy the property. Yeah. Because remember it was 2,500 up front and then 5,000 after our inspection period, if we decided to go through. So now they're like, Hey, we want 2,500 and that $5,000. Um, and then she said the 15 day contingency for the home inspection has expired. Please note home inspection must be performed by a licensed inspector and the inspection report must be attached for release if major issues have been found as the property was being sold as is. So then- but Did she read the contract or is she just making assumptions? Because I mean, it sounds like if you make assumptions that that could be like the standard way of doing it, but the contract specifically says otherwise. Yeah, no, so the, it exactly. So um, basically the title company was like, good morning, we are holding our 25, your $2,500 for this EMD, please. We need to have a, an, like a signed release for this. And then I was like, no worries. I'm going to loop in her broker now to assist with this. And then um, she said, unfortunately, so this is the agent again. She said, unfortunately, that's not how this works. For ease of reference, I included my broker. Feel free to reach out. And then um, I'm trying to find where. Uh, so good morning. Um, have a great day. Good morning. All attaches the lease. Uh, don't have the right agreement. Fortunately, that's not how it works. So I responded to her saying, unfortunately, that's not how it works for ease of reference. I included my broker. So I included, I said, good afternoon per the contract. Now this is what the contract states. It says this contract is contingent until 6 p.m. on the 15th day after the date of ratification for inspections of the property, not including radon, lead-based paint, well or septic, um, which require blah, blah, blah. By buyer, home inspection firm, and or other representatives at buyer's discretion and expense. 
Uh -huh. So it's not saying it has to be just an inspector. And so I said, it states that the inspection can be done by buyer, a home inspection firm and or other representatives. Nowhere in this agreement does it state I need to have a home inspection report to release the contract, nor does it state that it has to solely be from a con licensed contractor. Um, and I said, per your request, though, I have attached a copy of the inspection report from a licensed inspector based on the information our contractors provided us. Along with the additional inspection report, we have decided not to move forward with this deal. We are canceling it as previously stated. Please see the attached release and have your seller sign to get our EMD back. And um, she was like, uh, so basically, long story short, she she kept saying she wasn't going to sign. She wasn't going to sign. Um, so she was like, hey. We sent us, so she goes, good evening all, attached is a signed release, releasing EMD to the sellers. The seller is not agreeing to release the EMD back to the buyer. And then um, she said, blah, blah, blah. There's, I'm trying to find this one thing that I sent her because it was like. Um, so just for the people that are coming in to catch you guys up. So can we, can we okay so you had 2500 into the deal right you had an inspection period of 15 days and you come towards the end of your inspection period you elect to cancel the deal and not only do they say um you're, you're not allowed to get your emd back but that you also are required to put up your secondary deposit totaling 7500 and then give up your rights to purchase the deal so that bro that's ridiculous okay so yeah uh, where, where are we at now like what what's yeah how, so, how on that one? so i i basically <laughs> i told her hey like we're good i sent in the inspection reports please sign the release i sent her the release that signed by me sending back the emd to me she mm -hmm. writes up another release releasing seventy five hundred dollars back to the sellers has them sign off on it and then reaches out to title and says, here's the signed release from the sellers. Please release EMD back to them. Title reaches mm -hmm. back and she's like, hey, this isn't fully executed. We can't release the agreement. So I follow up because at this point, I've talked to a bunch of people and that are kind of in the legal side of it. And they're like, absolutely not. Like you can take her to court per the agreement and they have to pay for all of your litigation fees because they're in default at this point. Mm -hmm. So I jump into it and I get a little bit um, legal with it. And I was like, India. So I was like, um, we canceled within our inspection period twice, meaning we are not breaching the contract nor defaulting. I would like to point out that your client executed an agreement stating if this contract becomes void and of no further force in effect without default by either party, both parties will immediately execute a release directing the deposit be refunded in full to buyer according to the terms in the deposit paragraph. And then I said, based on paragraph 32, since we canceled and the contract has been null and void without default, both parties agreed they will immediately execute that release. And then I said, with that said, if your client is refusing to execute the release per the contract they signed, they are in breach of this contract. Also, based on the contract, the seller may be required to pay for my court fees and expenses. Shall we proceed to take this to litigation? And then I included that that term where and I, it says, if either seller or buyer refuses to execute a release of deposit when requested to do so in writing and a court finds that such party should have executed that release, the party who, uh, who so refused to execute the release will pay for the expenses, including without limitation, reasonable legal expenses inquired by the other party during litigation. Damn. And so I basically said, overall, based on the contract, since we acted within our time frame, we are not in breach. However, if your client is refusing to sign the release and holding our money hostage, they are in breach of the contract. Please advise your client that if the release is not signed and returned, we'll, we will be retaining a lawyer and seeking legal action to retrieve our EMD. So she didn't, she didn't say it kind of went quiet for a month. She mm -hmm. follows up. I was just going to leave it. I was taking it as a $2,500 loss, right? I'm like, whatever, you know, it's part of the game. Mm -hmm. She follows up a whole month later saying, good afternoon. 
following up on my client's behalf. And the seller reached out to me noting that he hasn't heard anything from Tyler title in regards to his EMD and wants to ensure everyone knows that he has not signed a release and does not plan on doing so and asked me to confirm that you still have the EMD. So now at this point, I'm like, you guys are being petty. So I reached out to India and I said, hey, India, no worries. The EMD isn't going anywhere until the release is signed or it's resolved in court. Also, I saw the house is pending. Congrats on the potential sale. But I do want to point out that without your client signing the release, me and him still technically are in contract. With that being said, I have formed um, someone or I have formed your broker of the situation. So his clients know um, there's an unresolved issue and the house likely cannot be sold until it's resolved. I don't want to hold your sellers up like this, um, nor do I want to drag anyone to court. Is there some way that we can resolve this? So she doesn't respond. So then I call the, the, the buyer's agent that has the property under contract. Mm -hmm. And I said, Hey man, so I'm actually under contract. How did you find the buyer's agent though? I have MLS access. Oh, okay. So I called the buyer's agent and I said, Hey man, I see that your client is under contract to buy this house. Correct. And he goes, yep. <clears throat> and I was like, well, I'm still under contract and they're not signing a release. So until they sign that release, I'm still technically under contract. So if they're not willing to sign this, this is not going to go to closing. And then uh -huh. they were like, um, she, the dude started panicking. He's like, oh my God, oh my gosh. Like I need to figure out how to get this resolved. So then, <laughs> yep. So then I called <laughs> the homeowner and I said, Hey man, I'm trying to get this resolved. Can we just get this release so you can go to closing? And he was like, oh, are you that MF or that basically said that, you know, you, and he basically got into a big argument and he was like, I'm not giving you shit back. Like you can, I'm keeping your EMD. And I was like, no worries. I just want to let you know if your if your agent is telling you that you're not breach of contract, please go back and read that contract. I'm suing you. And he goes, excuse me. And I was like, I'm letting you know right now that I'm suing you and my attorney will be sending the demand letter and I will be seeing you in court if you do not sign that release by the end of this afternoon. And I hung up the phone. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes later, I get an email from her. Hey, Jacob. Oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe this. She goes, um, uh, where, where was it? Um, <laughs> so she said, she said, basically, you wouldn't believe this. Things have gotten so crazy and it looks like your inspection went into the junk mail folder. I just saw that you did submit it before the inspection was over and we're, we're, we're sending you back the executed release. I was like, thank you. I mean, at least you got it solved, but that sounds, that sounds like she's capping. Such a pain. Long story short, though, that's why you really want to understand the contracts. And look, I'm not saying read them every single time before you sign them, but I would highly recommend reading your markets contract fully yeah. at least one time or sitting down with an, an attorney and having them go through it with you. Because at the end of the day, if she was right that it needed an inspection report, I had no grounds to stand on for that. Like I would have been screwed. But yeah. So, you know, just make sure you understand what you're getting into before you actually get into it. Because at the end of the day, we're signing a legal binding agreement. It's in black and white. And so, you know, it's going to protect us if we sign and do the right thing. Yeah, this is not like Apple's terms and conditions. You don't just check it and pretend like you read it. Yeah, exactly. Hey, <clears throat> so we got Marcella backstage. Marcella, are you ready to come up? Give me a, give me a thumbs up if you are. I think that's a thumbs up. Yeah. Yes. yeah sure. What's up, Marcella? Welcome. Oh, hello. Finally, I figured it out. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. You sent me you sent me a picture that left me with so many questions as to like what the story was on that. Is, is that the one that you plan on telling today, or do you have a different? Yeah, one? no, I have a couple of them, but that's that's more my fun one. I mean, it's not fun for the guy, but yeah. Okay. That was that was his beer can to the end. So yeah. <laughs> do do you want me to pull up the picture so that people sure. can see? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Can... Sure. Okay. Yeah, let me do that. Go. 
save image. I just want to put it on my desktop that way. It's kind of a long story. I'll probably make it short and sweet, but anyway. Ah, take, take as long as you want. Nobody else is backstage. Here, let me, uh, okay, window, boom. All right, so here we go. So so we got, like, all of these are beer cans, right? Yeah, beer cans, and then there's some, there's vodka bottles, but he did make a Christmas tree with the beer boxes, too. So oh, my God. Yeah. He did. Yeah, and there was no running water sewer or anything. It wasn't working at the time, oh. either. So, okay, yeah. but, like, how, how much time do you think it takes to consume that much alcohol? Well, okay, so... It's since February to May, uh, basically, is what we guess because that's what Did he you drink water, out. huh? Did he drink water or just consume beer? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. They they had the uh, the lady at the convenience store said it was like he picked up three 18 packs a day, like one in wow. the morning and two in the evening. So he was drinking quite a bit of water, was involved in the beer, you know, cheap uh -huh. beer. So, you know, anyway, um. Yeah, so this was kind of a sad story. It started in, um, I won this house at an auction. I, uh, my partner was late, so I had to bid on it. And it was a small town south of San Antonio. And I really wanted it. I had talked to Nathan, or Nathan, I'm sorry. I had talked to Wesley before. It was, it's a foreclosure. And I had, you know, he said there was no way he was leaving or whatever. And I had said, well, you know, I'll give you like, because it was on 25 acres, um, had a really big pond, which, y'all would probably call like a lake or something like three acres or something um, that he did built himself. And he said, Nope, I'm not going. And I said, okay. So I went to the auction um, and we won um, at 110,000 for this 25 acres. And knowing that there was another, there were some people, other people that were living on it also. I don't know. I didn't know anything about what, why they were there. There was another that he was in a mobile home and then there was another mobile home up on the hill that this family was living in. I was just like, okay. So um, we get done with that. And then we, we put out, you know, eviction letters to both of these people and he wouldn't go and they wouldn't go. Well, they, they just got the letter. She gives me a call. This lady, Wendy does. And she's like, Oh my God, we had no idea this is going on. We met and I said, don't worry. I'll you know, do what I can. Apparently he has sold her and her husband, their family two and a half acres. Um, he sold it to him, even though he didn't own the land. So they were okay, paying so, him. So yeah, hold on. I, I'm a little bit confused. So okay. he, he was on like 25 acres of land. Right. And, and he didn't own the land. Who who owned the land? Well, the, 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 the lady who owned the land, she was the one that was, um, you know, calling, he stopped making payments like a year ago. But mm -hmm. he sold off some of the land, but he didn't really sell it. He just told his friends, you know, just pay me and and it'll be your land, even though he didn't own it, you know. So he was just basically pocketing the six hundred dollars a month was all they were giving him. But that was like two and a half years of that. Um, mm -hmm. They thought they were paying it and getting a piece of, you know, but and they didn't know that they were going to lose this whole, they were going to lose their land. And I mean, their, their whole house and everything. If we, you know, kick them out, if we evict them. So I told them that we'd make a, you know, a deal with them. I tried to make a deal with them. I talked to the bank, got them where we could qualify them as far as buying five acres. We were going to sell them five acres so they could keep their land and keep their house. Cause they had it all set up, you know, septic, you know, all their animals, all their kids and everything. So, um, Wendy started looking out for me because we had to get Wesley out of there and mm -hmm. it had been weeks, a couple of weeks. I said, have you anybody talked to this guy or anything? And she's like, no, you know, we tried their daughter. I've seen their daughter go down there because their house is kind of up on a hill. They can see down to where he, and there's no trees. It's all feel like a farmland, real pretty. Mm -hmm. But, um, and then, so one day she's calling me, she's like, Marcella, there's a, there's, um, her brother or his brother's down there. I could see his truck and I'm like, okay. And then he's like, she's like, Oh no, there's a sheriff coming down the road. I'm like, Oh shoot. Oh, so man. yeah. Um, they, he, he had passed probably like two days and this was in like, I think it was on Memorial day. Yeah. So it was late, what may, whatever that is. And it was already really hot in Texas by then. So I, I imagine that it was, 
pretty ugly, you know. Um, so they they took his body out, and his dog was sitting there waiting, you know. Poor thing. And this was the this was what his house looked like. And we went in there after he was gone, and there was like mice and stuff crawling out of those beer cans and stuff. And he had not had running water for like for I don't know how long. So there was bags of stuff in there, you know, like. Wow. Bad. 47 oh years God. old, too. Wow. That's wild. It was pretty wild. So, yeah. Holy and it was just, it got worse, too, just because his his daughter and his kids started crawling out of the woodwork, literally. And, and they were like, they wanted, they were like, we want the mobile. And I'm like, y'all can do whatever you want with it. We're not touching it. You know, we're going to haul it off because. And it was just disgusting. The smell of it was just unbelievable. And um, then they came and they tried to hook up the, there was a storage unit on there. When we caught them, somehow we were going down there for something and caught them, like put the tractor up there to haul off the storage unit. We're like, dude, that's not, that's not yours. You know, you can't take it. And they were really, they were awful. They were, the kids were like, I'm like and I asked them, where were you guys like, where were you guys like in February when your dad was going through, obviously going through all this depression and everything. And, and they were like, well, you know, it was, it, and they were just horrible, worthless kids. But they, in, in, in a nutshell, he wouldn't let anybody into the house. So nobody really knew that that was going on, but he had lost his job like two years before or something. He was young, you know, every, he was very well liked and everything. Well, obviously he knew how to party. So, you know, and mm. it was, it was sad. Um, and they, they, so we got that hauled off. We got it kind of cleaned up. Um, it, it was a beautiful lake. I could show you pictures of it, but it was a really pretty. And um, we ended up selling, selling off made a really probably, I guess my highest amount of, of, you know, money off of it. When we, when you take into the amount that we sold the Zions, the five acres, and then we sold the other 20 acres to somebody in San Antonio. So it worked out really well, but mm -hmm. it was sad. Yeah, that is, uh, that's unfortunate. It's, it's surprising, you know, how many mental health issues we come across in this industry, because a lot of the time, you know, the environment that we live in is a direct reflection of what's going on in our head, in our internal environment. Right. And just to consume, just for this guy to consume that much alcohol, like he must have been really going through it. He just, I think he really wanted to drink himself to death. And that's what he wanted to do because he had said he was not leaving that land and he was not going to take one acre. Cause I literally offered him to keep one acre in his house. Cause it was kind of, but not the lake and you know, the rest of it, you know, but he wouldn't even do that. He just couldn't wow. do it. And I just felt really bad no. about it. So you, you offered for him to keep the acre that he was on and, and mm -hmm. just keep living. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it was something more than that. It sounds like, you know, maybe like self-sabotage. Yeah, they had said, I mean, he was worked for the, the utility company down here, uh, you know, really well liked. But I, apparently he had had some problems with drugs and like had failed his drug test, maybe. And that's what, you know why maybe why he lost his job and everything so that i don't and he was you know like i said he he was very nice every time i talked to him and stuff and i was just i felt really bad about it but it, you know unfortunately we we come across a lot of things like this in this industry you know you just do you can't you can't help it because a lot of pe time people like you said they're really losing their house or their their you know their belongings and stuff for a reason mm -hmm. you know yeah anyway wow that's the well, short, the short version of Wesley's house. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. That's um, wow, quite quite the story. You mentioned that you had a couple of them. You got you got any other good stories? Oh God, um, let's see. Um, trying to think of my other, my other dead people. Um, oh, well, pretty much all of them. Like they, people don't understand. Like when you like when your parents die or something like that, that you might actually, you know, own have equity in a house or something like that. So they just let it go. Um, there was, there was one that I got off of a, a neighbor had given me that was um, that. Um, oh no, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's a good one too. Okay. So the uh, neighbor had told me that he thought it was going to go into foreclosure uh, tax foreclosure pretty soon. And I got a hold of the son or the, the father of the son and find out, um, he was a 
he was a little crackhead, but anyway, he, so he was very excited to get any kind of money. Um, but he found out that they were $9,000 behind on taxes. And this was a mobile home in, in uh, Lavernia. And Man, that's a lot for a mobile home. Huh? That, that's well, it's on, it was on like a couple of acres, but it was there nine thousand dollars behind in taxes. So, but the house was a really nice double wide on a couple of acres. And and the way we do stuff down here is like we sell it as a whole, like a single family home. You know, we don't just sell the mobile home generally; like it goes with the land. So this was in a subdivision, and um, and I got a hold of the the kids, and I said, "Hey, would you guys sign off? You know, like sign over the deed." And they're like, "Why would you want that house? Because both parents had died in there." Um, not at the same time he died. And then like two weeks later, the mom died. So the, the kids didn't want to have anything to do with it. And I said, well, cause it's got a lot of equity. I didn't, you know, say all that, but I was like, okay, I'll give you, I gave them, we gave them each $10,000 and then we paid off the taxes. They wrote it over, signed over the deed to the house. And then we, we flipped it and then sold it for what, three fifty or something like that. So, you know. And that was wow. a, that was a really nice one, but that one had a lot of that had blood and stuff. It was gross too. Oh, wow. I just called all the furniture <laughs> out and I put a deal on Facebook Marketplace. I said, "Come and get it." Oh, and no. people were just like, said, wiped it out. Oh no! What did I, what did I get myself into? I'm like, let's start a show of wholesale horror stories. Meanwhile, I'm like nervous, like, oh my god, it's kind of it's kind of scary. Uh, yeah, that was a good wow. one. Wow! I had somebody tell me a story offline, and it was just. It was like so much. I'm like, wow. I'm this person that told me the story offline. I'm like low key. I'm glad you didn't say that online because I don't know if Facebook would allow that to stay up. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's there's some crazy stuff. Have, have you ever been in any deals where like it's just gone south? Oh yeah, sure. You, you got any stories from those ones? I don't know. Just regular real estate. When I had one, we had one that the lady decided the day of closing, she was going to, she wasn't going to sign, you know, and that just got, this lady was insane too. She was like crazy. That was bad. And, and it, but it, it, we, I think we actually did end up closing it because I think our, our title guy went out there and just like, just reamed her. And, and my partner and I, we stayed behind in the, in the, one of the other rooms, we weren't going to get around her, you know, she was just crazy, but that one was a good one. But I don't know, there's not, a, I haven't had a lot of them that just go south. And if they do, I do everything I can. Like if it, if it costs me money, I don't care. I'll pay it just to keep things, you know, just to shut people up and keep going. But I don't know, that was a good one too. But, um, and I have another one that was pretty good. That was a, that was a regular house and that was in Lavernia, but that one was, um, that was one that I was just driving by. I was showing the house next door and I saw it. I looked like, oh my God, there's a white sticker in the window. So I knew it was a foreclosure, you know? So I backed up and went and looked at it and it pulled the stuff. There was a letter there and a certified letter. It was a real cute little um, three bedroom house, white um, stone. And uh, come to find out there was seven kids on that. Their, those parents died too. So this was stepdad. No, this was their dad. And a, and a mom, but they had kids from all different, like he had kids, he, they had seven different kids and three of them were adopted or four of them were adopted. And then there was like three that he had from a two, one from a different mom and the other one with a different mom and then two from the same mom, you know, like just like mm -hmm. that. So they were like all over the He's place, at everything. So I had to get in touch with all of them some going through uh, Instagram, you know, Facebook, trying to find people. And because I, I wanted this house before it went into foreclosure and it just became the biggest nightmare. And inside the house, it, you see all those beer cans. It had um, cans, like just like vegetable cans, like just piled up on the floor. It was the weirdest. Yeah. We were like, what the heck? And, and the house was a wreck. I mean, a wreck. You come to find out when the dad died, they, he didn't have anybody to watch the kids or whatever. They were still like in high school, like young kids, like freshmen. Those kids lived there for like three years, no paying, no, no mortgage or anything like that. Got the electricity cut off at one point and the neighbors we have put back on lived there without any assistance. Get up on the morning, go to on the bus, go to school, 
They didn't know how to cook those, so they they didn't know what to do with all the cans, so they just piled them up. So they would get pizzas every night. That was what they would do. Like, wow. Were, so the, the dad died, then the kids were continue to live in the house yeah. without right. parents and right. tried to take care of themselves. The electricity got cut off. The neighbor turned the electricity back on right. so that they yeah. could continue to and they went to the, they went to the schools, they went to the state, they tried to get people to help them and nobody would help them. And there wasn't wow. all of the kids, so some of them had already moved out. Their older ones weren't even lived there. So it was, I think, three or four of the younger ones. And, wow. uh, How old? Like just high school Justin's, kids? Justin's 21 right now or 22. So I'm thinking that was, you know, uh, five, six years ago. And he's a, he's kind of a little slow, too. So it had it involved, you know, I mean, this was not easy. I can't imagine these kids living there like mm -hmm. that. But they were probably up to i think the oldest one was like 16. wow and um and one of them even had a baby she ended up having a baby too but when i got there it was all vacant and um you know a mess and then when i finally got a hold of them while i got the stories from all of them we ended up having to take a flight to go get signatures out in one area of texas that was so remote that that they couldn't even get a notary to go out there so it was crazy and um and um Philadelphia. I talked to, I mean, it was, there was a lot of infighting because they weren't all, you know, related necessarily. They were like half brothers, sisters. Some I hadn't even met, honestly, it was really hard. So it ended up giving each of them $4,000. So 20, what, 28,000. And then, um, and then we got the house paid off, which was, turned into a little bit more, of, a lot more of a challenge because they switched like right the day before we were supposed to close on the house, they switched they sold the loan to somebody else. Oh, uh, wow. And it came with like a $25,000 like assessment thing on it. I was like, Oh my God, are you kidding me? So it just was, it was one nightmare after another. And, um, <laughs> did you have to out of pocket 25,000 for that assessment or did they oh, eat yeah. it? Yeah, no, oh. no, they did. I mean, yeah, we did. Cause we had already, by that time I had completely, you know, switched over. Like I was in charge of the account and everything. Like I was calling the bank and all that. And they're like, Oh, we're sorry. I thought, but I'm supposed to close like tomorrow. They're like, oh, sorry, we sold it. Like, Thank you. So, oh, wow. so, thanks a lot. And wow. so they delayed it a little bit, but uh, we finally got everybody's, the affidavits of airships all done. We got ants and, uh, you know, people to sign off affidavits and everything. It was, it was crazy. I ended up having two of them come in from Philly and got them a hotel room. Justin and his brother live here. Uh, and it took I took them to the closing, you know, just because I'm like y'all are gonna go. It's like so, it was, and they got their money. It was, it was really, it was a good story. It just that was a lot of work. That took like a year, a year, wow. just to get those all those kids on board. Wow, it takes a big heart to to do all of that work up front. There's a lot of people that won't, won't go even a month into something like that, or like I it, it was fun. Wow. I like it. Like wow. Yeah. And and to be able to handle, you know, those situations, to be able to speak with that many people have that great of communication skills and that good of uh, emotional intelligence to handle a situation. That's, that's something to be proud of. It was, it was fun. Yeah. I, that was a good one. It was, it was a lot of fun and it, you know, I ended up making friends with them and it was, it was neat. It was, it was a good thing. They were all very happy. You know, the oldest kids, one of them is, uh, and she's only like five, she's like five years younger than me. So, I mean, it was a range from, you know, like 40 years between the kids, some of them, you know, the youngest one. So anyway, it was a good one though. I'm, I'm proud of that one. And that one, that one sold for right when the market was just starting to kind of go down a little bit, you know, we we're like, Oh my God. So we sold it right then. And it, it worked out good. Definitely. Well, I'm, glad. I'm glad that it worked out good. Yeah. Wow. So, whole yeah. year. Holy moly. The whole year, yeah. It, it was a it was a good story though. And we walked in like there was ha pantyhose hanging from the ceiling and stuff. And I was like what wow. the heck? You know. Then I find out from like we had it. Oh, we had an open house the for the neighborhood. I had a neighborhood open house because I and I put big you know posters up and stuff. And I mean that place was packed. I mean it was packed. And it's one street in and one street. But everybody wanted to go. They wanted to see what it looked like after we flipped it. And it was, it was really cute. And it was funny though, that the, uh, all these people showed up and they all told their stories, you know, what,
they did for the kids and what they, you know, all the stories where I got a lot of the information I needed to find them and stuff because it wasn't easy, you know, but, and there was only two that lived here and, and the rest of them were just all over the place. So but anyway, it was kind of fun. Wow. And, and actually in that, that open house, the buyers came to that open house and they bought it. So it was good. That's amazing. Holy moly. That That's is cool. That they need to know for you. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. That's You're that's welcome. a that's a really happy story to to finish it on. I'm glad that you shared that one. Uh, that sounds like you provided a lot of value. You helped a lot of people, and it was a win-win for everybody. Yep, sure was. Awesome. So, well, all right. thank you, thank You're you welcome. so much, Marcella. I hope to see you again. Okay, take care, Nathan. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Okay, bye. Bye. What's up, Mr. Jacob? You on the phone? Can't hear you. You're muted. No, I just didn't want us to be all scrunched up on the screen. No worries, dude. No worries. Was Bro, holy moly. What did ever? Welcome to the crazy side of wholesaling. Some of these horror stories are just like like the one that Marcella started with, with the um with the dude that was drinking all that liquor. Um, let me put it up on screen. Yeah, the, that's the scary. person that Dude, like, did this guy drink water? Like, how did you? I mean, he yeah, literally water. drank Pedialyte yeah. in there. There's tequila? No, there's Pedialyte. Where? The bottom right-hand corner. That's a little Pedialyte bottle. He's getting his electrolytes in there. This right here? Yep. Oh, I don't, I don't we don't have that in Canada. It's for when yeah, you're bro. sick. What's that? It's for when you're sick or you oh. need like electrolytes. Hold on. Dude, I'm like, bro, like I'm on I'm on the fence about the wholesale horror stories, to be honest. Like it was like it it's it's good, but it's also like it's a lot. It's look, this it's is what it was. Pedia electrolyte hydration drink. Wow. Dude, I mean, this guy should just try water. Facts. Yeah. Nah, I don't think it's, I mean, bro, like, this is the crazy part of wholesaling. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think if, look, if, unfortunately, if people are trying to get into wholesaling and not come across stuff like this, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's bro. It's true. Like, you know, we try to stick our head in the sand and just talk about the good stories. But like, there's some really messed up shit. Yeah, like, some really, really messed up shit, bro. I, I forgot about this one until now. Um, my second deal that I did, it was in Cleveland, Ohio. And what it was is it was like an 80 something year old woman. Um, she had four kids, four sons. Uh, one of them was a good son. The other three of them were drug addicts. They were living in the property with their mother. The property had a broken uh, water main or broken mm -hmm. sewer main or whatever it was. So it was an unlivable condition. Um, the kids were verbally and physically abusing the mother. And keep in mind, she's like 80 something. And, and she calls me, right? She calls me off of a Craigslist We Buy Houses app that I make. Um, and I make her an offer and everything. And her, her, son is part of, her son is part of it. Her son was like brokering it. Um, mm -hmm. trying to help his mom out and I make her an offer. And then we kept trying to close and the three drug addict kids kept saying all kinds of crazy stuff like, Hey, she's not in her sound mind. You know, the one brother is just trying to take advantage, like yada, yada. Um, you know, don't proceed. One of them like sent me an email pretending to be a lawyer telling me that like I was going to get sued if I proceeded that she's not in her sound judgment. Um, and like, I was scared. I'm like, holy crap, this is my second deal. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I'm just trying to help her. Like, I was just told that, like, you know, she was in a shit situation. I made her an offer, got her to sign. Um, and dude, I even went to the extent of, of canceling. Bro, I literally canceled the deal. And then, because I was scared. And then they, the son ended up calling me back with the, with the mother on the line. And, like, she, like, reaffirmed. She's like, look, I'm in sound mind. I am in sound mind. I'm in a really bad situation. I want to be able to get out of here. I want a little bit of money so I can go rent a place and live out my final years in peace. 
because I'm tired of being verbally and physically abused by by her other three kids. So it's, it's it's crazy, bro. Like the shit you come across is absolutely crazy. Kids pretending to be lawyers, uh, trying to tell me that like their mother is not in sound judgment, and and you know, and, and they're doing that because they're living their rent free, right? Obviously, it's in, to their benefit to cancel the transaction. Yeah, I mean, did you deal with you deal with? I remember I went to one. Um, like it was my first deal I ever got under contract and it was with a real estate attorney. And like, I got this house under contract with him, but it was a hoarder house. So the whole house was just filled with stuff, mold all on the walls. And it was just so confusing because this guy is our author. He like wrote a book and like, wow. he's, a, he's an attorney. He was like, it was just crazy. So you do, you just deal with so many types of people. I mean, you get to help a lot of people. That's the beauty of what we deal with is, you know, we do deal with a lot of crazy situations, but that's why we get paid big checks is because we're helping those situations. You know, if every, if, if there was no motivation there, they would just list it or, yeah. it, you know, or they, or they would just wait it out until they get their offer. So it's like, we you deal know, with the shit nobody wants to deal with. Yeah. That's the unfortunate side of wholesaling but it is the reality of it. Like we do come across situations where it's just outdated and we can just help them or maybe they moved on. But there is also situations where it's a divorce or someone died or, you know, again, it's unfortunate, but. Dude, you know. I had this pocket listing brought to me, bro. And you know what the agent told me? What? Dude, she's like, I'm bringing you this listing off market. They don't want to go on market. Because the husband blew his brains out in the garage. Yeah, that's insane. Like, I I understand why you don't want to go on market. Like, yeah, it's, it's pretty messed up. I didn't end up contracting it. It was too high of a price, and I, I was kind of nervous to follow up. But, yeah, it's crazy as <laughs> shit. Yeah, I mean, it can definitely – it's an interesting, interesting game we play. But yeah, we're problem solvers. I mean, at the end of the day, we're problem solvers. We're here to help people in those situations. I think I think almost all of the situations that wholesalers find themselves in, like where they're doing almost all of the transactions that wholesalers find themselves in are transactions where like mental health played a really big portion into it. Like a lot of the direct to seller stuff, it's like mental health issues that the sellers were going through that caused the property to get that distressed. What, what what is your take on that? I would disagree because I've, I've dealt with a lot of direct to seller situations with people and I've gone to appointments and I've talked to them on the phone. Um, most of the time it's like someone died and they inherited a property. Um, maybe <coughs> it's outdated and they don't want to fix it up. Uh, I've seen people that are relocating in the military and need to sell quickly. Um mm. I've seen, you know, people that got behind on their payments just for whatever reason life happened. And, you know, like we did one in, in DC where it was just the mom owned it and she let her daughter stay in the property for free. And her daughter just was not a clean person, I guess. And it wasn't like a hoarder house, but she didn't tell the mom about any problems that were going on. Mm -hmm. So like by the time the mom found out about all the issues, like they didn't have the money to fix it up. So they just had to sell it as is. So there's, there's like a, I mean, to your point, there is certain health problems that go into it, but I wouldn't say it's the majority because you also have to think if there's true health problems, like you got to be really careful there because if you're signing contracts with someone who's not in their right mind, that's not like you're, mm. that's not a, that could be challenged in court that that's not a legal binding document. So mm -hmm. I would, I would lean, yeah. I would say if you're, if you're only signing contracts with people, not in their right mind, you should probably loop in a power of yeah, attorney or someone. Don't go, to, don't go to the psych ward and ask, ask them if they want to sell their house. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I mean, to your point, bro, like you, I'm not saying there's, whoops, I'm not saying there's something like, 
like mentally wrong, but like, you know, maybe you're just in a rough spot and you just have a, like life is happening and something, you know, you don't take care of this and it just falls apart. Or, you know, another one that I see too is like they used to live there and they moved and they had plans to fix it up or do this or do that with it. And then it just sat there Mm -hmm. and then it just fell apart. And the more it fell apart, the less money they had to fix it up. So I think it really depends on the situation, but to your point, the hoarder houses and the houses that are just where people are living in them and they're that bad, you clearly have, you might be in your right mind, but there's something going on as well. Like, Mm -hmm. cause a normal person will not let their living conditions get to that point. Yeah. I I think, I think we're, like people, especially people doing direct to seller, like we're kind of like therapists in a sense, like we have to have really high emotional intelligence. And one of the things that I like about doing agent outreach rather than direct to seller is because I don't have to like take on that weight of like having to listen to people's problems. And oh, here we go. We have an awesome comment that distracted me. Uh, Ben Power made a super awesome comment. Jacob, you want to read it? I just read it. Heck yeah, Ben. Appreciate it, dude. You said I helped him out on some things back in the day. I think I saw you on the call last night too. On the uh, coach call. And on I the and on the one before. Last I saw night. him in person at the mastermind. And I'm like, damn, Ben, you're a handsome fella. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, the other thing too, I think if you're doing direct to seller, and I think this plays a this is like a real I, I don't know if enough people do this and I hope they do, but if you're going direct to seller, um, one of the things I would say you really should always do, especially in the situations where they're elderly or situation like that, um, talk to like, give them all of their options. Mm-hmm. If you see someone in distress, you never just say that you're the best option, cash buyer, blah, blah, blah. Give them all of their options. Like say, hey, if you list it, here's what you can get if you list it. Here's what to expect. If you fix it up, here's how much you're going to put into it probably. Here's how long this will take. If you're going to do this, here's what it will do. Or you can sell it with me. I'll give you this much and we can close this soon. So Mm -hmm. again, we're problem solvers. Sometimes that solution is not us. And like, I just want to point that out because if we are dealing with people that are in a really bad situation, they're not always going to make the most rash rash decisions that they need to. And so Mm -hmm. they need someone like us that can actually give them, lay out everything in front of them, not take advantage of them and actually help them make the best decision. Like imagine if your grandma was selling her house and someone like me or you came up and was, you know, trying to get her to buy her house. And maybe for whatever reason, we are not in the area to help or something happened to us where we couldn't help. We would hope that whoever's buying our grandma's house has that same mentality and says like, Hey, if you list it, this is what you'll get. I'll buy it. This is what you'll get. And then let her not only make the best decision, but say like, if you're listing it and you can get 350, but my offer is 250, mm-hmm. maybe you push her to go with listing it because you know she's elderly and that's her retirement money. Again, that's just how I think life will repay you. But I think if you're going direct to seller, that's a like you really have to be as ethical as possible because of the people that we're dealing with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree, bro. I agree. Miguel like, says, do you ever sleep? Do you ever sleep? Um, sometimes. He last live night streams. I, yeah. La, la, you should, you should watch my uh, sleeping live stream. It's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> last night, I think I got like five hours of sleep. I, I went to bed at like 12 and I, I got up, no, I went to bed at like 1230 and I got up at like 545. And I can't do that. Dude, I'm you know, during the day and I've become bro, like, I'm annoyed at everyone if I don't get a lot of sleep. <laughs> I don't know how I do it, bro. I don't know how I do it, dude. I have so much to do today. Like, I'm going to be live for about five hours today in total. Oh, my God. Now I'm yawning. Um, I'm even I'm even uh, going on Wholesale 101 on Jamil's channel today at 4 p.m. So, guys, 
4 p.m. on Jamil Damji's channel, Wholesale 101. I will be there. Um, it will be Let's pretty get awesome. Let's on here. Yeah, I think we will. I think we will. I. What do you think wanna, Jamil's craziest horror story is? So I want to bring Jamil on, but I don't. I don't. I don't know exactly what for yet. I know when I bring him on, I want it to be something really good. I don't know if it would be wholesale horror stories. I think. I don't. I don't know yet. I think I would like ask to do like an eight-hour live with him or something like that. Heck yeah! Something big. Yeah. Oh, we got to do another eight-hour live soon, bro. That was that was my best engagement video. We got so okay. many people that texted in for the cheat sheet. I haven't even looked at that in a while. Yeah, let's see how many people. Yeah, I'm about to go look. Um, cheat. It's called Eight Hour Live. Yeah, we're at 79. I know. I'm looking at the last people. <laughs> Bro, some of these people, some of these people, I, like it auto populates their name. <laughs> and they, uh, and, and it's like, Nathan, I'm Damien. I'm watching your beginner's guide on YouTube. And that auto populates us. <laughs> I know. I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Anybody with the email is like already a contact for sure. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> what's up what's up i'm watching your podio that's their first and last name what's up i'm watching your podio no, i'm just joking like but that's like what they're uh that's like the examples of what's popping in there right um miguel says are you still in canada yes i am um may 1st though i'm gonna go travel the world and i'm gonna vlog everything traveling the world so it'll be a marketing expense please watch my blog so that the irs doesn't question it <laughs> there you go he said, <laughs> did you guys hear the story about jerry norton finding a severed head at one of his deals oh my, oh my god, god. Bro. nuts i would have like Dude. a mini heart attack and like be had that PTSD for at least a week. Bro, I'm dying to find out. Wow. Bro, that's crazy, dude. That's crazy. Now that's how you oh bro. Look at this. Now that's how you get ahead in real estate. <laughs> yeah, right. Do you want to oh. get ahead? Buy this house. And then they're oh like, oh, we buy it. And they're like, how are we getting ahead? And they're like, it's in the basement. Oh, my God, bro. Oh, my God. This shit's wild. All right. Well, that's that's all I have in me. I got I to gotta go pee as well. So we're going to end Oh, it. my God. This is, someone said the husband went missing. It was awesome. <laughs> bro. This is turning into the wholesale true crime documentaries. Bro, literally. Literally. I'm for it. All right, my dudes. Well, I'm a bounce. So I right. appreciate y'all. Appreciate you, Jacob. Thank you for your consistency. Guys, bring your stories next time. Make sure you have them ready. Bring them. We want to showcase you. Um, so yeah, come on, get your stories. And I'll see you all in like little to no time at all, like 30 minutes, and I'll be back on the live. Easy, guys. Peace.